Um, I do want to give you a kind of a breakdown. Now, I'm going to draw a little bit here, so uh, I'm not the greatest drawer, um, but <laughs> let's just kind of walk through what happens here. Let's see if I can draw a terminal here. So here's our computer terminal, and the client requests a report. So what actually happens behind the scenes, and, and let me just say, I'm keeping this at a very conceptual level. Uh, it may be a little bit differently depending on the mode we have, how things work, but if you understand this, I think this will be a fair enough idea of how this all kind of ties together. So the client requests the report, and that then goes to reporting services. So here's the big iron box, right? Here's our SSRS server. That's where the report definition is stored. And this report definition can be stored in the database. It can be stored in files. Okay? We are hitting the report server via a URL. You know what a URL, right? HTTP, www, etc. Okay, so that's how we are requesting our report. If we're dealing with true client server where we're involving two separate machines, the client is on one machine, the SSRS server could be halfway across the world on a completely separate machine. So the client's going to request that data using a web address, a URL. Now, I'm not going to detail all of the inner architecture here. I'm going to just focus on the data sources. Now, those of you that know reporting services will recognize that I'm leaving one critical part of the equation out, however, not critical to understanding, in, in my opinion, how it all works. So your report is built off of one or more data sources. Uh, yes, uh, that's right. You can have multiple data sources within the same report. And so let's take an example in which we actually have multiple data sources. So SSRS then takes that request, and it figures out which report that you're requesting, and then it passes that data source request to, let's just use in this example, a SQL Server database. Okay? So you've got a SQL query that it will then, in turn, log into SQL Server, execute that query, and then take the results back. So I'm going to use a different color here. So it runs the request on SQL Server, runs the query. SQL Server sends back a result set. This is just plain client server at this point. It's client server between SSRS and the SQL Server. And yes, the SQL Server and the SSRS can be on the same box. Yes, they can be on separate boxes. We're going to cover that in our uh, Chapter 2 when we talk about installation here. Okay. Now, let's also take the case where we have uh, the data comes from an Oracle instance here. So we're going to use an Oracle query over here. And so what happens here? SQL Server sends over the stored uh, the query, and what is Oracle going to do? The exact same thing SQL Server did. It's going to send back, and I'm just going to abbreviate it RS so you don't have to watch my horrible handwriting. Uh, so it sends back a result set, right? Now, the magic of SSRS kicks in and says, okay, I've got all my data. Now I'm going to formulate the report according to whatever the report author put in it. Am I going to do subtotals? Am I going to do a bar chart? Am I going to do a tablix report? What is it that I'm doing? That's what happened when the report author designed the report. And so now it sends the report back to the client. Okay, So it sends back the report. And it has all the data and everything is formulated. But the client only had to connect to reporting services. Reporting services managed all of the rest of it. Now, I'm not going to get into the security of who was it that actually ran the SQL query? Was it the client's Windows account? Was it reporting service? We're going to talk about that in security in Chapter 3. Okay? We're also going to talk about that in Chapters 4 and 5 when we define our data sources. Okay? But for now, just keep this as a generic general idea of how it all works. And as the course develops, 
we'll just kind of expound on that and we'll we'll zoom into the various areas and, and you'll see hey he forgot to mention this this keeps it high level okay. all right now coming back to our prepared slides here what can we use as a data source so remember we connected and ran a SQL query and ran a Oracle query what other types of queries could we use you know we can connect to any version of SQL Server and run a query we can connect to the analysis services SSAS we could connect to Oracle Hyperion SAP Microsoft Access pretty much anything you can get an OLEDB an ODBC interface to you're allowed to make the connection now if you're working with something that you don't see here uh, DB2 Informix uh, my MySQL MySQL whichever way you want to pre uh, say it you can go download additional drivers and or providers that will allow you potentially to interface with that there, there are companies that make these uh, some of them are available for free you could even write your own uh, provider okay so just because it doesn't install with reporting services don't shy away from it you can still use MySQL as a report source all right, so how much does SSRS cost? Let's move into a slippery slope uh, for me here. I hear this whenever I teach, whenever I go to conferences. Somebody asks the question, how much does reporting services cost? And somebody else says it's free. Okay, well, there are, there are times when it will be free, absolutely. And there are... A, there's a large swath of people who will in, be working with reporting services on a day-to-day -day basis in a company, and it will be free for them to implement. For a large percentage of the people, though, it will not be free. Okay, so here's the, the idea here. I can't tell you everything about licensing. Okay, uh, Microsoft is very aggressive with their pricing and licensing. Uh, they have different pricing models for uh, all kinds of companies and types of organizations. So I'm not even going to attempt to get into pricing. I'm going to get into licensing, right? How you license it, different from how you price it. Okay? So here's the the key point, the key takeaway from this video right here. Any machine in your organization that has one of the critical components SSAS, SSRS, SQL Server installed on it needs to have a license for SQL Server. Okay. Now you remember back when we talked to, when I drew all those awesome looking boxes <laughs> and I said here's the SSRS server and then it hooks up to this SQL Server and it runs a query if that SQL Server is on the same machine, we only need one license. But if that SQL Server is on a separate machine, we have to have two licenses of SQL Server. One for the reporting services server, the machine with the reporting services installed, one for the SQL Server. Okay. Now let's go through a couple of scenarios here, and I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to try to cover them all. I'm going to try to cover what I believe are some of the more common scenarios and what I think, if I taught you this, then you could interpolate, uh, extrapolate, uh, interpret the licensing for your needs from. So let's go through one scenario. We've got one single server, and it only has one CPU. And so we go out and we buy SQL Server 2008 Standard Edition CPU license. That allows for unlimited user connections. Okay. I'm not even going to get into the CALs, CALs, client access licenses here. So how much does it cost for reporting services in a situation where we have a single server? That single server has both SQL Server installed and reporting services installed on it. How much does reporting services cost over and above the cost of SQL Server 2008 standard? Zero. Because you only have one machine, and the reporting services is on a machine that has already purchased a license, you do not have to buy another license. Okay? So this is the case. This is a very likely case. 
there is a large percentage of the people out there that are going to be using this exact scenario. So for them, the cost of reporting services is nil. It doesn't cost them anything. It's included with the cost of the SQL license. Okay? Now let's take another scenario here where we've got two servers. Okay? Now two servers, server one and server two. Server one has SQL Server 2008 standard edition one CPU license. Server 2 just has reporting servers, services installed on it. And for its data storage, it uses the SQL Server on Server 1. Okay, so we have two physical machines. One has SQL Server, the database server on it. One has reporting services. The reporting services server needs a database. Okay, it stores all of its information in a SQL Server database. So it stores everything in Server 1 SQL Server. So how much does reporting services cost? Well, now you have to have one license per server. Okay? So we actually have to purchase two SQL Server Standard Edition licenses in this instance, one per server. Then that could get expensive, right? OK. Now look, I'm, I'm not your Microsofty. Uh, if you want to know more, go to Microsoft's website, talk to your sales vendor. Uh, they'll be able to get you a lot of info. Just FYI, there are some massive licensing changes between SQL Server 2008 and R2. And when I say massive, I mean more expensive for you, <laughs> more profitable for Microsoft. So make sure uh, if you are considering upgrading that you've, you've figured that part out. A lot of people are buying SQL Server 2. I shouldn't tell you that. Um, let's just say that R2 has some very expensive licensing options in certain cases. Okay. Make of that what you will. So I tell you what, let's go to the next video before I get myself in trouble. And let's talk about some of the things that are new in SQL Server 2008 that we didn't have in SQL Server 2005.